Welcome to NinjaCast, a photography podcast powered by Studio Ninja, the world's highest rated business management app built specifically for photographers. Listen and learn as the most successful photographers on the planet share their knowledge to help you transform every element of your photography business. Here's your host, Sally Shaw. Hi guys, welcome to NinjaCast. Today we are joined by Tash Jones of Love Luella Photography. With the events that are currently unfolding in the world around us in regards to the Black Lives Matter movement, we are extremely privileged to invite Tash onto the show today to talk about her own experiences as a black wedding photographer, but also give her advice on how we can ensure we are promoting diversity and inclusion in both our businesses and our everyday lives. So without further ado, I'm really excited to talk to her. Here we go, Tash. Hi, Tash. How are you? Hi, okay. I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, nervous, but good. Oh, don't be nervous. You're gonna smash it. It'll be amazing. So how's things? How's how's business going at the moment? How's life? Well, I mean, obviously coronavirus has put a stop to my shooting. Um, but I've been quite lucky. I've only had a few postponements that I couldn't do. So I've managed to maintain ninety percent at least of my original bookings and also I've had some good new bookings as well the last eight weeks have been quite good for me as opposed to April which was abysmal so you know we won't talk about that though I'm doing great (laughs) fantastic that's that's really good we're all kind of in the same boat just yeah through and hoping for the best at the moment aren't we but there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel I can feel it coming (laughs) yeah I hope I hope that um we will be able to shoot properly before the end of the year, I hope. Yeah, I've got everything crossed, absolutely. So for our listeners that may or may not know you, can you tell us a little bit about you, your business, and your kind of overall journey so far? Okay, so I'm Tash, obvs. Um, My business is Love Luella Photography. Um, I started in 2018, actually, although the industry probably didn't know about me for many years later. Uh So when I had my second son, I wanted to, you know, be a mom photographer and I wanted to capture him and obviously my other one as well. Um, So shooting them from home, that escalated. Neighbours saw those photos, local people saw those photos. Mm -hmm. So I started doing families. And then one of my friends was getting married in 2015 and forced me to do their wedding. It (laughs) wasn't a choice. It wasn't a... Yeah, I'm a wedding photographer. It was like, okay. <laughs> Regretted <laughs> team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't go full time really until January 2018. So not very long in terms of booking consistent weddings for me. Yeah. I didn't go full time until Milo, my youngest, went full time school. Yeah, so absolutely. I guess, you know, I flit inside, in and out of groups, but... I'm not really that active. I don't really do a lot in terms of active groups. So, hello, if you've never met me. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tash, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we're really privileged to have you on the show today. We're really excited to chat with you. Today, we're covering a slightly different topic to our normal podcasts with the recent movement with Black Lives Matter. Um, Studio Ninja really wanted to invite um, somebody onto the podcast that was going to be able to help us um, educate ourselves, educate educate our listeners and make a positive change moving forward Um, and you very very kindly agreed to come and have a chat with us today so we're really excited to uh, have you on board. So starting first of all then um, Tash can you tell us if you've ever experienced any kind of racism during a wedding perhaps maybe something that the person might not have necessarily deemed to be racist at the time? Um Yes, unfortunately I have. Um, I did want to say, just before we carry on, that um, obviously I'm really grateful for Studio Ninja for approaching me to speak, Um, but black people as a demographic are so diverse, there's so many cultures and religions and different views, I can't possibly represent everybody, so I do only represent myself in in this conversation and any conversations going forward. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's definitely kind of about us learning from your experience and learning yeah, from your yeah. 
Because um, I have a lived in experience of being a black wedding photographer and also in the UK as, as in general. Um, and I'm happy to talk about it. Thank you very so, much. Going back to your question, um, I have experienced racism at weddings. It's, it's unfortunate, but it does happen. It, it's not something that is irregular. I wish it was. I wish I could tell you. That's not something that happens all the time, but in some form, it does happen. Um, it could be obvious, like being followed to your car at the end of the day and being verbally assaulted. Mm. It could be that obvious. Or it could be subtle and more, you know, walking into a room and having backs turned on you and people refusing to acknowledge you no matter what you try to say, how you approach them, Mm. which obviously feels, as a photographer, when you are tasked with capturing all the happy memories, quite difficult Mm. when someone won't acknowledge you. Um, You know, when alcohol is involved, things that could have been subtle to start become more obvious from some people and then things that you could pass as just someone being rude because of course there's loads of rude people absolutely um, <laughs> it's more obvious the more alcohol gets involved as time goes on as the day goes on mm. for me the the hardest part is the introduction um, because more often than not I'll be greeted with things like you know, you look aggressive or are you going to be trouble today or don't start with me, you look like you're going to be hard work. And I'm like, ooh, I'm Tash. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm just there to do a job. Mm. And that's the first taste you get of if this is going to go okay. Yeah. Um, do you think that's kind of um, from their perspective that they're – intentionally trying to pass comment there or say something that is inappropriate or do you do you often find that that's kind of light-hearted banter in a way that maybe just steps over the mark I think that um a lot of things can be passed as banter but banter is really your thoughts wrapped in a joke mm. so if you are willing to make banter comments about how someone looks intimidating and they've never spoke to you, you've never met. That's probably based on a view or the media portrayal or something that you have internal to you. It's not what I've done to cause that. That's your view on me. Mm. And that's before I've even opened my mouth. So (laughs) while sometimes I think people make inappropriate jokes or comments because they're nervous or they, especially around where I am in rural North Wales, it's not as common to see people who look like me. Mm. So they may, they could well panic. But, you know, you know, you kind of know from experience and consistently having those reactions when that comes from a place of unfortunate racism mm. or from a place of genuine, whoops, you know, I didn't mean to cause offence. Because it is possible. Mm. It is. And only time can really tell which one it is. Because yeah. as the day goes on, you get to, ban- you know, you get to have banter with those people. I get to chat to them. I get to see them have a drink, enjoy themselves. And that usually gives me a good indication of what kind of person I'm dealing with. And then they get to know what kind of person I am. Yeah. Um, I just hope that by the end of the day, I've changed their mind slightly mm. or given them a new insight to what they expected. Absolutely. And when, when those type of things do happen, does it kind of make you feel um, on edge? So let's say you arrive at bridal prep, for example, and somebody does pass a comment like that. Like, how does, how does that set you up for the day? Um, I'm going to reflect to an actual event because it's much easier. Um, I remember going in, this is in the early days, when I hadn't done many weddings and I was very, oh gosh, where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> Who am I? Who do I think I am? (laughs) And although the couple were amazing, and I mean, we had a great relationship. They booked me. They knew who I was. um, Their parents didn't. And the older generation don't always think before they they pass comments. Mm. So I remember walking in, and it wasn't bridal prep, that it was, you had to walk through the venue to get there. So I met the parents first. And they were visibly shocked. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it, really. And the, the father actually said, 
are they joking? They didn't hire her. And then he said to his wife, do you think she photographs in colour as well? And I was just like, I was gutted. Wow. It's of course it impacts you. I felt nervous, intimidated, unwelcome, sad, uh, disappointed. Um, because you, 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 you've got the energy, you love your job, you go in there with full, ready to smash it. And then that, that's what you're greeted with. Of course, that changes your demeanour. Luckily on that day, a bridesmaid overheard it and had told the bride before I got to her. And she was, she was mortified. Mm. She was devastated. And she apologised on behalf of her dad. But he would never apologise. It was hard all day for me to achieve my goal mm. of capturing him authentically because he visibly stiffened around me and obviously with an opening like that you know why that is mm. all I can do as a photographer is center myself in the job and concentrate on why I'm there mm. because I can't control other people's behaviors but I can control my reactions and I can take a moment go to the toilet think right mm. don't let this be you know a defining moment for you don't give them that power and then continue to push through absolutely Hopefully. I'm really sorry that you've had to have an experience like that that must have been awful in terms of how that made you feel in that moment but then I think it's so easy to carry things like that forward as well isn't it you know it's easy to it's easy to let it affect the rest of the day you know so that's that can be with anything any any anything that happens in the morning of a wedding if something doesn't quite go to plan or somebody passes a comment that they probably shouldn't have done um it's so easy to let that affect you. But in jobs like ours as wedding photographers, you can't let that affect you because you've, you're there to do a job and it's such an integral job as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think as wedding photographers, we have learned or grown a thick skin because you know what it's like. You come across, well, it takes so many people to make the world, um, so many different personalities. So, you know, as a female even, we have it, slightly harder I would say depending on your size I have you know there's all those other jokes as well and you can take them and you learn to get a thick skin but when you have the color of your skin which is obviously something so obvious something so inherently me I can't take it off I can't minimize it I can't change anything about that so it's really it's just another hurdle that isn't necessary mm. um I think if everybody was just kind, you know, it's cool to be kind at the moment. So it's, it's really interesting to see that that logic isn't adopted through things like racism because mm. it's a basic general right and kindness to exist and not be expected to be attacked for it or made to feel inferior. Mm, absolutely, and, absolutely. You know, you can't win it all, but you can keep trying. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's, I think that's a power that you, you know, you can definitely harness in yourself, can't you? You can yeah. say, I'm just going to keep pushing on. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've already mentioned kind of the spin on being a wedding photographer in this already, but as, as wedding photographers, we're very much bystanders in people's day. Um, you know, we, we witness it all from a bit of a outside perspective, I guess, in, in, in some respects. So if, for example, I was to go and shoot a wedding um, and I witnessed, um, racism or I witnessed an incident that made me feel uncomfortable what could I do um at that point and following that as well mm, it's hard because as you know we've got to remain professional there's this big thing where we're there to do a job and we're there to document it and there's a lot of people that will say you're there to document whatever unfolds mm. however as a human being if personally um I'm going to use an example, if I viewed or was witness to homophobic slurs, I would personally ask them to stop. Mm -hmm. I, there's a way of doing things. Politely asking someone to stop something isn't unprofessional. Mm. Of course, if you see somebody being verbally or physically attacked and the motive is something like that, um, then you've got to assess the safety of the situation, obviously. Okay. Don't put yourself at risk because you've got a job to do and self-preservation is key mm. um, but speaking to venue owners or managers you know somebody who has the authority to de-escalate or remove people from situations mm. 
they have more of a say on what happens in their establishment, mm. whereas we are guests at that establishment, yeah. just like the, the, the couple and just like the guests. So if it's something, a passing remark or a joke, I, I would just not laugh and say that was really inappropriate because mm. at the end of the day, you have a right to say how you feel regardless of whether you're there to perform a service or provide a service. Mm. Being wrong is wrong. So calling out wrong is the right thing to do. It's just making sure you're safe and that, you know, it's not going to impact the day. If you can do it subtly, obviously, that's always the best way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think and- really importantly as well is – you know, check in on that person that's had to receive that comment or receive that abuse afterwards is a really big thing. You know, if you can't do anything else, um, just saying, are you okay? Yeah, it's really important to remember that in any altercation, there is an attacker, a regre- an aggressor and a victim. And that victim, obviously, is going to be feeling all kinds of emotions. Mm. And more often than not, the person on the receiving end is hoping with everything, because I know, because I felt it, that someone will have their back. Mm. So be that person, check on them, make sure they're okay. Alert somebody else to the fact that it's happened, because if it's happened in private, they may not feel comfortable saying, oh, this has just happened to me, because they feel like they're diverting attention from someone's special day. Mm. It's, it, you know, that's completely right, what you said, um, checking on the victim of the, of the time is priority um if it's safe to do so obviously if it's a physical or alcohol is involved and it's escalated then obviously getting somebody from the establishment is the best way i say because there's only so much we can do even legally as people Mm. uh, to stop the situation Definitely. So as, as photographers, I mean, we're privileged to shoot so many amazing weddings and we have such um, amazing opportunities, really, to see so many different types of weddings. For photographers out there that perhaps don't have a diverse portfolio, but they really want to show that they're supportive and inclusive. Have you got any suggestions on how they can maybe go about doing that? This is a tough one because... Obviously, it can lead a never-ending, it's a never-ending answer. Mm. I live in North Wales, in rural North Wales, not just, um, you know, not on the borders. I'd say it's quite, uh, it's a very, very white populated area. I'm definitely in the minority. So if you look at my Instagram, for example, um, shameless plug, it's not, (laughs) it's not, it's not. not. (laughs) Um, if you look at my Instagram, there isn't as much diversity on my Instagram as there would be if I lived in Manchester, Liverpool, Bristol, Leeds, mm-hmm. London. Um, because as a diverse person, as somebody who is inclusive without thought, I can only shoot what comes my way. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is, there is black people on there, there is um, Indian people on there, and there is a same-sex wedding on there because that's organically come my way from just running my business with integrity. Um, I don't think it's possible to, like, if you're going to try and get more diverse content suddenly, I don't think that's possible at the moment without looking performative. Mm. Um, I would just say you don't need to rush because this is a lifelong effort I think that if you continue to lead by example and operate your business with a good heart behind it, then eventually that will come and come into itself. It's not something that you have to um, really focus on. I think social media pressure in that instance isn't healthy in this situation. Um, if you're going to do a styled shoot, because I've seen a lot of people are, then all I'd ask is that they please pay black models and not just hope that they'll get black people to shoot for free because then you're not really helping and use black wedding suppliers as well and elevate them and uplift them as well Mm. so that it's not so much as a performance but an actual collaboration um it's always good to help others on your way up so in that in that way i would say consider consider yeah consider why you're asking people suddenly Mm. you know they weren't there before, consider why that wasn't and then work on that first maybe. 
Absolutely. That's uh, that's really great advice. Thank you. For people that perhaps, you know, it's not necessarily just a styled shoot that they're after, that actually they really love to shoot weddings of different cultures and not just a bride and groom that are white British. Do you have any tips on how they can go about achieving that end goal? Yeah. So if you really love cultures and diversity, then that will show in the way you are in your home life. That will show in your music tastes, in where you spend time, in your friend group, in, you know, things you choose to do. So for me, if you truly love black culture, you'll be going to black culture events, photograph them, uh, you know, photograph the positive things that, that we do and shed light on that. People are quick to photograph the protests because... Obviously, it's a historic event and it's something that will foster likes at the moment because it's trending. But if you actually, you know, obviously after coronavirus, because we're in lockdown, the the local cookouts, the local music festivals, the the startup companies, the charities, all of those people you could foster organic, real relationships with. And they would be so grateful for a photographer's help, a professional. So... If you truly want to help and be in a diverse community, put yourself in the community, put yourself forward. It's not always comfortable to do something new, no matter what it is, but the more you do it, the better it'll get. So yeah, I would say get in there and there's some great culture, because I'm not very cultured. I wouldn't say I have any religion. I don't really have any belief system. I'm just Tash. Mm -hmm. But there's so many, you know, countries and so many different cultures, beliefs. It's a plethora of resources. And if you start in your local community, I can guarantee there's somebody that would be happy to get to know you and that you could help without even putting too much effort in that would mean the world to them. Mm. And then that will also give you more black content because you are actually in that situation and you were at the local carnival and you took your kids because it, it's a great day out or it doesn't always have to be that you get the couple straight away. I think that sometimes good time. So when uh, couples, for example, are choosing their photographer, they will trust the brand that, that is consistently doing good mm. in all aspects, not just in Black Lives Matter. Um, and you know, same sex couples are going to trust the couple, the photographer even, who is consistently shooting them with, with joy and not portraying them in a performative way. So I think just all of those things, being mindful of what you're doing and why you're doing them is so much, it's just as important as the results. Mm. And just getting, in, getting involved and showing that there's yeah, a genuine care. Yeah, I've already been um, approached by a company that never thought they'd, like it's a small startup and only me speaking out online now, they've had the, they've said they had no confidence to ask me because they assumed I'd be too busy. Mm. I don't think anybody's too busy right now. So we could all give our time to stuff that we might not have been able to do if wedding season was in full swing. Yeah. So meeting those people next week, I'll hopefully foster relationships and real friendships and networking is, is literally part of it. So yeah, I definitely know, even me now, five weeks, six weeks later, I know way more black suppliers than I did that before. Mm. And it's only been positive because I, I didn't know and they didn't know. And now we know each other, good things can happen. Definitely. So it's pushing yourself out of that comfort zone. Yeah, I love it. That's, that's awesome. So in terms of asking people for advice, um, obviously this podcast is very much created with that in mind, giving people advice, asking you the questions and your opinion on questions that people may not feel that they can ask or have the confidence to ask. So is it okay for people to ask um, other people if they've experienced racism and ask them to talk about that? And if so, how would they approach that situation? Um, so if it's, if it's your friend group specifically, um, you know, when you look at your friend group and you think of the characters, you know who will borrow you their clothes. You know, uh, based on your relationship with them, who is going to have your back in a certain situation. I'd say judging your relationship is really important because right now, and I know I can speak for most black people in this 
one question, it's really, really tiring because all our lives we've been told to remain quiet and not discuss things and not react. And out of the blue, um, because of a worldwide you know, movement, we are being asked every single day. It's on social media, in the queue at Tesco, my friends, my family, because for me, I have half white and half black family. So there's difficult conversations every day. That can be really draining. Mm. Um, so I would say consider before you ask, could I find this out online? Could I read about this? Could I listen to a podcast, you know, or even search a hashtag on Instagram? Because honestly, that is a eye-opening thing to do. I've, I've switched from looking at cat videos now to, <laughs> you know, looking at hashtags and I'm learning still. So I would say you can, you know, technically you can do whatever you like, but it's probably a good idea to think about how that person is feeling, checking if they're okay. And if you are going to ask them, be sure you're ready to listen because it can be quite hard to hear somebody you know, trust and love telling you something that you don't want to hear. Mm. Um, and if you really want to know and you are prepared for honest answers, then, you know, that, that conversation is going to be difficult. So be prepared for that mm. because it's difficult for both parties involved, I think. Yeah. It's so um, uncomfortable because it's new. So I think everyone's learning together at the moment, aren't they? As well, you know, it's not, yeah, yeah. It's um, not something that everybody's supposed to know all the answers to, it's not something that we're supposed to have all the knowledge on. It is very much everybody is still learning and absorbing from each other and, and just working together, really. I think, yeah, it, even if you studied every book and every podcast every film based on a topic you would still have more to learn mm -hmm. and there would still be someone who has a different lived in experience than what you thought you'd learned so it's a constant process and it would be silly for me to think that I know everything about anti-racism I'm not an anti-racism consultant I am a wedding photographer mm -hmm. so I don't pretend or portray to be um you know, selling workshops on anti-racism, I can help you and whoever asks me to teach them about how I feel. Um, but then you might ask A, B and C and it might be a totally different perception because they've lived a different life. Mm. So the more conversations and the more people that have the questions, you know, and this content such as this now, this is going to open conversations with people that they may not have had. Mm. That's a great thing. Because without questions, there is no answers. So no questions too silly. But, you know, again, referring back to the energy thing, I would say if you can search for the answer online or get the answer from your, your white family and friends as well, because they may have more experience from talking to somebody as well. Mm. So I think, yeah, a group effort, literally a group effort, a team effort is what's going to make a change now. Great. Fantastic. So I've heard a term um, that I haven't come across a great deal um, before the Black Lives Matter um, movement began, um, and that term was tokenism. So I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about what tokenism is for people out there that may be very much in the shoes that I was a couple of months ago, and they thought, I've heard of the term, but I don't fully understand it. Um, and then what as conscious business owners, how can we avoid being tokenistic? It's really hard because I, could, I just keep saying everything's really hard. <laughs> it's so hard. It's, like, it's a hard conversation. They've I had. know, I know. So tokenism is, is a singular or symbolic act or use of a small number of people or sometimes one person um, from underrepresented groups. So... For example, um, a company has 20 board members and they have one BAME person, one Indian person or one black person. Not both, just one. Mm -hmm. That's clearly tokenistic and just to tick a box. Um, so obviously in personal business, if you are simply watching this podcast and then you think that's it, I've done the work, that would be me being your token. 
Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You've got this all to do. So one black couple on your feed is not going to be you being inclusive. That's, that's a token gesture, basically, mm -hmm. to appear inclusive. Tokenism is to appear that you are doing the right thing, whereas what we really want to see is the mindset and work behind those acts mm -hmm. being organic and authentic. Um, I think it takes years and lifelong, even for me, to unpack all the, the biases I didn't even know I had until lately. They're things that, you know, from the media, from songs, from films, that have been put on me, so I believe I can only achieve a certain amount of things. So once you unpack all of those things you thought you knew, mm -hmm. you can probably move forward with all people without the thought or worry of having tokens because it should be second nature to you. Yeah. When you when you do something with thought, it becomes a habit. So just practicing, it sounds silly, but practicing you know, if you're practicing getting five black couples in a certain time frame, that will be normal for you because it is normal because obviously the world is made up of so many different types of people. Mm. Um, time is the only thing that will really tell me and you and everybody else whether something was a token or not mm. because once this trending topic fades, it will be interesting to see how feeds and how people go back to normal conversations go back to normal or whatever your normal was mm. um and exactly. then that will say a lot about tokenism exactly. you know more than i can um we have a saying over here in the uk don't we have the proof is in the pudding so it's exactly. very, let's, <laughs> let's see after all this has died down kind of who i guess that as you say that's kind of very much tokenism people yeah. may have been tokenistic if they're all for diversity and inclusion right now um but if that dies down when the movement dies down then that exactly and yeah. um, that is important um you can keep a mask on forever you know the mask will slip so if you're not doing something with integrity and with with heart that will be transparent eventually and i would rather you do the work solidly and consistently out of the public eye than do something that means nothing to you truly mm. you know what i mean mm, absolutely that, that would be that's mm. quite interesting actually that you've touched on that so photographers that you know there, there may be people out there that don't feel that they want to publicly um talk about or express their feelings or get involved even um but they may want to do something behind closed doors where they're where they feel in their comfort zone are there kind of suggestions as to what people can do within the public eye to help move things forward in a positive way but then also behind closed doors so do you mean um to do it publicly what what can they do oh so, yeah well, publicly but then also the people that don't feel comfortable doing things publicly what can they do that isn't public so actually doing the work would be the best thing if one person watching or listening to my monotonous ranting <laughs> and then went and did the work and actually educated themselves because it sounds like I'm telling everybody they need an education but that's not what I'm saying I'm saying even I and everybody needs to learn how the whole system is built to make you all believe a certain thing mm. and it is it is a lead narrative and a, you know no matter how you look at it that will impact how you feel towards people internally mm. it might be unconscious it might be conscious but either way what you did yesterday does not define who you are today. So you can do the work, speak to people, talk to your white friends, make a support group. You know, it's easier, I think, to discuss these things with other white people who feel the same as you because it's uncomfortable being told you've been in the wrong the whole time. No one wants to hear that they've not done a good job of something. Mm. And if you truly have, you know, no hateful thoughts in you, because only you can answer that, towards black people um, that can be even more offensive because you truly believe you're a good person and you probably are so for people who don't want to prove that they're good because i guess that's how it feels right now with the media pressure the way you've got to like 
prove that you're a good person. Go announce it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I would say actually looking at your business, at your home life, how you speak to your children, even if you don't do anything on your business page, how you have your conversations at home, how you have your conversations with your friends means so much more to me mm-hmm. because everybody that you speak to, everybody that you encounter, you influence in some way. And if you can call out uh, racism, if you think that, you know, your children are maybe not as inclusive or as less free of judgment that you would want them to be, have those conversations because it's really important, you know, um, not just to put something online but not mean it. Mm. To me, for the people who are struggling with a, with a big public display of solidarity, don't do one then, mm. you know. Time will show me where your intentions lie yeah. anyway. And I think... Um, from, from the perspective of a black person, yeah. you, your feelings are it's okay for people not to make a public declaration of their support. It's okay if you don't feel that that's where you're at with it, but you can, you can make changes in other ways. You can make improvements in other ways. It's, put it this way, it's more important for me for you to do the real work at home and with your peer group and with your family than it is for you to put a black square on and not mean it. Mm. If you put that black square on and you meant it, I'm absolutely over the moon to see that you support my life mattering. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is, it's questionable when I see, you know, my friend in the industry not saying anything, this is usually doing something wrong. But I would rather you try with it with with heart than to just do nothing and expect things to get better because none of us can really complain about nothing getting better or this moving forward if we're not all going to play our part in helping it happen Mm. um so i think that you know in our industry it's likely we have a following who like our work we can impact the people who view our work in a positive way without shoving it down their throats you don't have to just share memes to be you know an ally having positive commentary open conversation calling out comments that are negative if you do post a couple that are black because you know it does happen not just deleting them not removing them but saying this is not welcome on my business things like that um it doesn't have to be what everybody else is doing, you can do it in any way. As long as you're doing it, I'm happy. Yeah. Like the fact that you're doing something, well, that's much better than how it was for me before. Yeah. So I welcome all positive change. That's great. And do you feel that um, obviously there's some barriers for some people, um, not necessarily even just white people, people in general um, of all ethnicities, all races, um, of them being proactive when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Do you think that there's any advice to help them overcome those barriers? Um, I think barriers is a strong word, but it does depend on where you live. Um, Again, where I live, if I was white right now, it would be really difficult for me to grab a, a couple in, under the you know the restrictions as well and find a couple to make myself look inclusive mm. so of course like where you are and what your life is currently like what your friend group is like I guess that would be seen as a barrier to your immediate social media mm. you know picture but but it is more than that it's not an overnight thing like sincere prolonged action is I know it sounds like I'm repeating the same thing, but sincere prolonged action, photographing, you know, local black run events, helping a startup, even your neighbour, you know, all of those things, they're important. And eventually, organically, couples will come your way as as a byproduct of that because, of course, the more people you know, the more people you can market to the more clients you'll have. So I think pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, if you've only got white friends, I'm not saying go and run out and make new ones, like, hi, I'm Tash, you know, but saying hello to people and offering your services or 
offering to assist, not even with photography, just donating a bit of time will we'll, we'll foster organic relationships. And I think that any barriers you think you have will be mostly down to feeling uncomfortable. And I totally understand that. Um, you know, if you have zero preference on who you shoot, then you won't be worried that that's something you need to immediately remedy. Mm. I think because... 95% of my couples are white and heterosexual. I don't worry about it because I would shoot them with the same energy that I would shoot an Indian wedding or a Jewish wedding mm-hmm. or a same-sex wedding. There is no, there's absolutely no preference to me. A wedding, to me, that I've booked with a saturated industry like we're in, and I'm absolutely ecstatic because... They could have picked anyone else, but they picked me. Mm. So I don't have any preference. I don't particularly mark it to a certain age group. Every wedding that comes my way, I go with 100% energy. Mm. And that's what I think should be the the, the goal in terms of photography anyway. Giving someone, yeah, for full energy. Yeah, treating everybody like you would wish to be treated, I guess, you know. Yeah, yeah, because well, building uh, brand trust takes time, doesn't it? And I think, you know, when you think of your favourite brands, they've built your trust over time. You didn't just love them. Um, and I think that's the same with us. And I think the more we do and the more we interact with the community and the more, you know, positive reinforcement we put out online, you're going to reach new people because pe- you're going to be inspiring people. And that will build your following in a way that you probably didn't anticipate. And it'll be a good thing because it'll diversify your portfolio, but also diversify your life. Mm. And, you know, learning from different cultures and minorities and, you know, everyone. Everybody's got an amazing story to tell you. And I'm here for it all. All of them. They can tell me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, <I love> <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> so if there was one single, now that I'm going to warn you, this is a hard one. <laughs> If there was one single immediate change that anyone listening to this podcast could walk away and change right now in their businesses, what would you suggest that change could be? In terms of this, obviously, racism, um, there's no immediate change. You can't undo 400 years of oppression in four weeks, but you can take accountability for your actions right now. And after social media inevitably dies down and this trending topic becomes the fifth most popular and not so hot right now who's going to hold you accountable um right now we're all being held accountable by the attention of the media and every business is probably under scrutiny for black lives matter once that fades will you hold yourself accountable the absolute number one thing i would want is that everybody personally holds themselves accountable for their actions, like with thought. Um, If you drop your ego and you drop the fact that you think you don't want to learn anymore, because I know I was that person, probably thought, I'm so woke, I know it all. No, I don't. I definitely don't. Now that I've dropped that and I'm open to, you know, everything I say, everything I do has a consequence and an action, you know, I, I can say anything, and I could make you feel a certain way. Um, that's on me, isn't it? Once I said it, however you feel is how you feel. I can't control that. So I think if we all go forward, holding ourselves accountable for our actions, instead of just assuming it's the right way or thinking it'll be okay or A, B and C didn't react, so E, F and G shouldn't either. You can't really go like that. The, I, I would just love to see... Yeah, that one thing. If you all focus on yourself and not what everybody else is doing, it's not a race, that would be amazing because, well, that's how we all progress, really. Just making sure that you're doing good, you're saying yeah, good. Yeah, instead of competing over it or who can do it better, there is no such thing as the best at anything. It's being better than you were yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. So accountability, holding yourself accountable, everyone that would be the immediate change I would want to see um, where people take responsibility for themselves. Awesome. Fantastic. So in terms of changes across the industry, um, I think 
it's been a hot topic across the wedding industry, across many, many suppliers, um, that there are potential changes that could happen in the wedding industry to help improve things, to help make more positive changes. What would be the ideal changes that you would like to be seen made in the industry? So in the wedding industry, I'd like to see um, oh, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see diverse panels. Oh, photographers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd like to see diverse panels of speakers, um, not one in 20 or just one representative of a minority group and not any other minorities because that doesn't make sense in my head. Mm. Um, and not just that, but, you know, when you have one black person on your team as the diversity specialist, we've got other skills too. So we don't just have to speak about being black and being diverse and inclusive. There is so much talent and skill in the industry that I didn't know about just a few weeks ago. Um, I feel ashamed that I didn't know these people because they're amazing. So I'd like to see the wedding industry celebrate these people, not just because they're black, but because they're good at what they do. Yeah. And if they're epic, they're epic. It doesn't matter what colour they are. So equal celebration of, of people's skill set and not just... You know, I hope one day I can speak on how much I love being a photographer and not just what it feels like to be a black photographer. Yeah. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, aesthetically, and to look at, obviously, I would like to see blogs with more diverse content. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you look at some of the big blogs now, you can see their normal. So what they perceived as normal, what was normal for them to post, completely drastically drastically change in the last few weeks and that's like it's jarring to look at because then it's even more obvious because you're really showing me that that content that you're posting now you had access to all of that before but you didn't post it mm. why not so number one why didn't you and number two what's going to happen when you, your feed inevitably goes back to normal it's it's that's another conversation but I'd like to see, you know, not just 17 black couples in a row now. I want to see white and black and Indian and mixed race and same sex, all, all denominations of people normally, mm -hmm. instead of it being this one-off phenomenon of white, 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 white. Oh, no, it's Black Lives Matter. We're going to have to do a few cubes. Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I think not just that, aesthetically to view they should support black owned businesses just as much as they support how it looks so you know asking somebody for their photos is one thing but what if they are like me and they live in a predominantly white area so they won't support my work because right now I've got no black couples so you look inclusive mm. but by not including me you're not being inclusive yeah. so like just thinking about the actual rationale behind your decisions and they've got such a big platform, they could do better. All of them could do better. None of them is better than the other. I think that it's, it's a really ingrained society way. You know as well as I do, we were discussing this before, as curvy ladies, it's so hard to see a representative of you. Absolutely. So, there's nothing better than being able to identify. And when you're wedding planning, you're excited. You want to see you, or not you, but, you know, someone who resembles you. Yeah. So you know that you're, you're all right. And, like, it's the same for us. I don't see any curvy people. I don't see any mixed race people, only if they're with a white person, so then it's posted. I don't see any black weddings in, in, in African dress it's always got to be a designer dress, pampas grass, or loads of green plants. Mm. I want to see all the stuff in between because all of those people have got married and they've got a story to tell. Yeah. So I would love to see, yeah, just a real, real, diverse, openly honest view of love instead of a carefully curated, aesthetically pleasing Vogue version of love. Yeah any magazine just saying <laughs> <laughs> I, think that, I think that would be an epic path for the industry it'd be I, enjoyable to watch wouldn't it yeah. definitely 
Yeah. So if you could offer one final piece of advice to our listeners, it doesn't have to be necessarily heavy on the topic we're talking about. It can be business. It can be personal. What would that one piece of advice be? So for me, I know I'm not perfect. There is no way I could be perfect because I don't think it's an attainable goal. Mm -hmm. Um, But I know that I enjoy achieving more than I did yesterday or doing better than I did yesterday. So if you take photography, for example, and you look at your past work, you look at your first shoot, and then you look at today's, you can see massive progress there. Mm -hmm. And you can see visually uh, how much you learnt, how much you've grown, how much your knowledge has expanded in that craft. All I want is that same energy in terms of being a better person. So it's not even anti-racist would be a byproduct of you trying to be a better person because it is as simple as right from wrong. Um, You know, good and bad, right, wrong, you know the difference. So if you're constantly trying to be better than you were yesterday at just being a human, then I'm happy because eventually that will include anti-racism as well because it isn't right and it is wrong and it is bad. (laughs) And it sounds so basic, but... You know, visually, I look at my photography and I can see, okay, I took note of that light. I saw that didn't work. That pose was crass. Like, hell no, not going (laughs) to do that again. Then I did better. So, you know, look, I'm not holding you accountable for what you've done in the past. We can't undo the past, but we can change the next day and we can change next week. So you, if you focus on you and stop focusing on what everybody else is doing about something, I really think that I feel hopeful for my future, you know, grandchildren's lives. I feel a hope that I've never felt before. And I hope that that is real. Like, I hope that happens because if I focus on continuing to be a better racism speaker than I was today, then of course I'm going to improve because I've never done this before. It's certainly not my forte. It's not my speciality. And I'm not the best, most eloquent speaker, but I, I speak with honesty and that's all I can do. Um, so yeah, you know, try and be better than you were yesterday. I'm not going to shout at you for what you did last week, even if you did something terrible. I'm here to judge you on what you do from now. And same, you know what I mean? I'm going to make mistakes inevitably. Someone's going to be unhappy with what I've said. So I will take on what they've said, accept it, and try to do better that's all we can do everyone's human aren't they I think as long as you're as long as you're always trying to improve yourself and as you say be a better version of yourself than you were the day before then the world's going to be a better place we have the we have the clarity you know of mind to be able to learn from mistakes you know we're superior in terms of animals and stuff so we've got no excuse really it's just about how much you want to make an effort So I know if I hurt your feelings today, I will care that I've hurt your feelings and I will try not to do that tomorrow. I'll try to learn and and change what I did to do that. That's all I'm asking is that you take on how it feels and think, you know what? I probably have got a few things I could undo. I won't do that tomorrow. Don't, Don't mourn for the days you've lost. Just go forward and do better. Like, I think we can all do better. I can do better. And I'm trying. And that's all we can do. Definitely. Definitely. I really, really agree. It's fantastic to have kind of spoken to you about that and hear your your experience and you empathizing with everybody else around you as well. It's been amazing. And um, just before I do let you go, if I was listeners, let me do that again. Just before I do let you go, if our listeners want to find out a little bit more about you, how they want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? They don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so I'm Love Luella, Love Luella on Instagram, Love Luella on Pinterest, Love Luella Photography on Facebook, and my business is Love Luella. So, like, I'm, I'm open to feedback and I'm open to questions. Obviously, I can't respond to everybody immediately because it is just me. I've got no team, I've got no squad. <laughs> But like I am open to conversations and I am open to helping people to 
understand where I'm coming from if something doesn't come across well mm. or something was confusing. I, I understand that, again, this isn't my job. Um, so I'm learning as well. And it'd be great to hear some feedback, to be honest. Like, I'm open to it. Oh, well, I think my feedback <laughs> is you absolutely smashed it. It's been a pleasure chatting with you today, Tash. I've loved it. I've learned so much. So I definitely hope our listeners have too. Um, so thank you so much for coming and joining us. It's been a real honour and a pleasure. Um, I hopefully see you very soon. I'm sure you will. <laughs> All right, Natasha. Thank you so much. Bye. See you later. Bye. Okay guys, so that's everything from us today. I really hope you've enjoyed today's show and a huge thank you to Tash for sharing so much detail and so much advice with us today as well. For the show notes and to see some clickable links through to Tash's website, you can visit www.studioninja.co forward slash episode six. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of NinjaCast brought to you by Studio Ninja. Beautifully designed and super easy to use, Studio Ninja will help you manage your leads, clients, shoots, invoices, contracts, workflows, and so much more. To learn more or start your 30-day free trial, go to www.studioninja.co.